Thank you, Phyllis. Phyllis brings us our music every Sunday unceasingly, and I want to give her a big thank you for always showing up. So good morning. Welcome, Unity of Bloomington. My name is John Acapio. I get the honor of being your service leader today. And I want to say welcome to those online. Um, you're going to miss out on our hugs today, but we are, are going to keep you in mind. And we're going to also keep in mind all those people who are traveling, right? So we miss you, but we're going to go ahead and enjoy ourselves. So um, for our welcome song, we are going to sing Affirmation Rock. Go. I am a powerful, creative, spiritual being. I am a powerful, creative, spiritual being. I can create anything I want this life. I can create. of Bloomington, we believe that our God is love, our race is human, and our faith is oneness. And we are a heart-centered community seeking spiritual awakening and transfer transformation by deepening our connections with God's self and others. So let's hug. Greet one another as you will, and when you hear the music, come back to the service. Although I am living a human existence 
So here at Unity of Bloom feel free to have a seat. Here at Unity of Bloomington, we are in the midst of a major transitional period, a major creative transformative period. And we uh, have a statement of being to go along with this, and it is um, our transition affirmation. Let's say it together. Unity of Bloomington is generating an abundant future in expansive alignment with spirit. We lean deeply into truth principles, live our faith, and trust the process. Our greatest desire is to be abundant and attract those who value spiritual growth, including our next right minister. Thank you, that felt very nice. All right, so today I have the honor of introducing Natalie Coffin. Um, she will provide our special music, message, and meditation. Natalie is a local singer-songwriter, a vocal coach, a Reiki energy practitioner. She was a frequent performer for Unity of Bloomington in the past pre-COVID. And recently, she has been focusing on furthering her education as she will be a first-year law student in the fall. <laughs> She's also crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so one of Natalie's primary main influencers is Unity's co-founder, um, Myrtle Fillmore. She has studied the writings and taken to heart Myrtle's wisdom. So Myrtle believed wholly in the power of affirmative prayer and aligning with Christ's mind. And because of this, Myrtle was actually able to heal herself of tuberculosis by using her intense, focused belief in this wholeness. So, using the power of music and story, Natalie will share her personal experiences of using Myrtle's beliefs and the powerful techniques to overcome her own health challenges, demonstrating the incredible relevancy of the healing power of the Christ mind today. Welcome, Natalie. Thank you, John. It's quite an introduction. Thank you so much. You have a gift with words, putting things together. So I, I kind of want to speak about this song a little bit before I just sort of roll into it, uh, because it does go along with what I want to talk about today. And by the way, I put the Holy Spirit in complete charge of this talk. I'm minimally responsible for what is about to occur. I hope that it's inspiring and that because I feel like you come here every, on a Sunday to get a tidbit to take away uh, into the week and so I'm hoping that something I say today is helpful for you in that. Um, so over the last eight years, um, almost nine years, I have been through an incredible healing transformation and have always really known that I would be speaking about this transformation when the time came. Never really knowing when that's gonna be, you can't rush something like that. So um, I've not really been coming to any church for a couple, few years now, due to the pandemic and due to just, uh, uh, you know, not really feeling, feeling it. So when I saw that you're, we're in transition again, um, and, I, and I see that you, um, Dan was gonna be looking for speakers, I was like, oh, you know how you just get that feeling like, yeah, I'm gonna have to do that. And I was thinking, well, what am I gonna talk about? And it's like, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, um, so I'm here today to, for myself, 
start to put together what I've been through in the last eight years and to develop whatever is next for me in that mission and calling. <clears throat> so this song is called Exquisite Peace and it was written kind of like in the thick of uh, uh, the depth of the beginning of the healing. And if anybody's been through a healing process in the room, you know that it, it is not a pretty thing to go through. It's kind of like when a butterfly enters a cocoon and all of that, everything that happens. But shortly after my mother passed in 2015, at the, at the, in a really heightened time for me, she passed away. And this song came through. Oh, and I'm going to start talking about her, and then I'm going to get teary. So <laughs> I, mean, just, I don't want to do that. This song came through as a prayer uh, to me. My music ministers to me first. Uh, and that's its primary purpose first, always. And then I think that it is able to be helpful to other people who may be ex experiencing some of the same things. So this is called Exquisite Peace. So, there's a lot in that song. <laughs> it's a big song. Um, I tend to write big songs 
and sort of, I'm going to call it channeling, channeling the big songs. I also want to tell you, I may sit down and because I, because part of my healing, my legs are not quite functioning just right yet, so I'm still working on some things with that, so I may need to sit down. I release all judgment on myself for that. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, I almost could just offer that song and then we could just sit here for 20 minutes and feel that the power of that. So what was happening when the song came, and I'll get to Mildred. Mildred's in the room, she's good. <laughs> Myrtle, her name's Myrtle. She's like, my name's not Mildred, it's Myrtle. I know, I keep calling you that, sorry. Um, so in 2015, um, well actually, I'm gonna back up a little bit. 1999, I was, I was uh, diagnosed with an illness and um, told that I needed to take some medication for that illness. I bought the diagnosis and went in full force with that. And, and over the next 16 years, I was on a lot of medication. And the medication started to create other illnesses. And I finally, in 2013, started doing some research about this medication and found out, look at all the symptoms that I'm having and the medication is causing it. So I did a thing against doctor's orders and I'm not, if anybody's at home listening, I'm not saying to do that. Please don't do it the way that I did it. <laughs> I'm not advocating not to take medication, but I realized that the medication was like killing me. It was supposed to be helping me. So I found a, a radical nutrient company in Canada and they had a product that could be a replacement for this medication. But there was a whole process to it, right? And so in 2014, I started that process, replacing the medication with the nutrient. It's just nutrients. And at the same time, I had a dear friend named Marcy Downing who did energy work guided by the Holy Spirit. And so I was doing this work with her changing from, me from medication to this other product. And in the middle of all that, my mother got sick and she was a big part of my support and she died <laughs> at a very inconvenient time. <laughs> oh, come on, we have to laugh a little bit, you guys, seriously, you know? I'm like, really? <laughs> and so the song, I'm in like the very worst place I have ever been physically. And I'm going through this horrible process of detox in my body. And I mean, when I say horrible, I'm a pretty strong individual. It was pretty bad. And there were nights where, I mean, I was shaking for night, night after night after night. And there were times when literally, I, was, I would pray to Christ and just say, just please, you know, please help me. And on more than one occasion, I felt a spirit come into me and just hold me down. And I heard the words, I will never leave you or forsake you. Was that Jesus? I don't know, but I don't know who else it would have been. <laughs> so I'm kind of coming out about all of that as well, right? Because I, I've been sort of like a wild child with, as far as spirituality goes. And I've I've looked into all of it and roaming around doing, looking at, you know, trying to find a place in all of that. But really, the healing power of Christ is something that you cannot, you cannot deny that. I cannot ever deny that again. Anyway, back to the song. Songs have always, when I'm, I'm a writer because I had difficult times and all through childhood. I would go to the piano and work out my difficult times, and that's where they come from. And I would just go in this angsty place, and not even really meaning to, but the messages come to me from spirit. And so I've just lost my mother, I'm in the middle of a detox, and I don't even know if I'm really gonna actually make it out of it. And this song comes to me, peace. And it's probably the most extraordinarily beautiful song I have ever received. I mean, it's, it's beautiful. 
Okay, so what else do I want to say? This is the first time I've ever done something like this, by the way. I talk a lot, but <laughs> not in this setting. Um, so I think that I'm just gonna talk about my own journey. I, had, I did a lot of research about Myrtle for this because I really feel so strongly about her and I feel strongly about women and how we've been setting the tone for a long time. And I want her to be recognized for the amazing life that she lived and the healing that she believed in. If you want to heal, you do have to believe in it. You have to believe. So it's an extraordinary tale. Of course, we didn't have modern medicine then. And when you, if it's kind of interesting when you go back and look at what was actually happening in her time, the early 1900s, you know, we were um, getting, I think there was World War I and then the Depression and all these things. She died in 1931, and so there were, we didn't have the technological advances in medicine that we have now. So I feel like if Myrtle were around today, she would say, you know, use the Christ mind spirit within you to make the decisions in your healthcare, for example. I don't think she would continue to say, like she sometimes was famous for saying, that you know, medical care was not, it was just go to God, you know? So there's, I, I think that she would say, go to God and then go to the doctor, right? Um, so that's kind of where I'm landing with that. I'm gonna flash forward just a little bit because I just I wanna give you something to take away from this, but, um, so going through this healing process that I've been through, I would say that anyone who may be going through something similar, um, there may be three things to keep in mind. Um, Christ consciousness. Every morning when I get up, I have 20 minutes where I spend in, in, in conscious meditation and prayer and set my body up for the day ahead. I've been doing that since the, be the middle of the pandemic. Because when I go out into the day, I want to have already filled myself or let that beautiful stuff that's within me, I want it to already come up and percolate so that whoever I talk with, I can better manage <laughs> how they're going to be. Which, the other thing I want to talk about uh, just a little bit is we are in an unprecedented time of transformation, right? It's a little bit ugly out there, wouldn't you say? And then you add social media into all of that, and it's just quite, I find it quite difficult. Every day, it's a new table being turned, if you will, and more shit coming to the surface. And you're just like, ah! We're dodging it all the time. But I just wanna say, I think that we're all here for a reason. There's a reason that we're all still here on the planet, right? We made a decision, we made a choice, and so here we are and thank God for it. And I know there are many among us that are not here anymore. So I wanna, I wanna talk, think about them also that didn't make it through the last three or four years. And that's, let's just acknowledge how hard that has been on all of us. It's been difficult. Okay, so it's back to the pandemic years. Um, in 2020, out of, just kind of out of the blue, I had finished my last, um, healing journey through music school when I was <laughs> after, so after my mom passed, I'm a doer, so I have to do things to get myself going. And I decided to go back to music school and I started studying music therapy. And it's a beautiful profession. I got, I got pretty deep into it, but then I realized there were just too many boxes for me in that. And too much of where you have to kind of just go along with the healthcare system. I can't do that. I have too much other experience. I just cannot go along with all of that. Music therapy is beautiful, but music for me is freedom. I mean, I have to be in control and do how I feel I want it. You know, I cannot follow any restrictions when it comes to music. That's just not the way it works for me. But through that journey, I realized that what I am inside also, as well as a musician, is an advocate because I'm always the one. I, when, if we're in a room of people and you and I are all in the same room and there's something that's not being said and as everybody's afraid to say it, I won't be able to not say it. I'm gonna say it, right or wrong, good or bad, that is me. <laughs> I'm always gonna have to point out, nope, that won't work because, and everybody goes crazy. 
But really, I mean, that's what happens. When I finally accepted that, it's like, wait a second. What that is, is an advocate. That's an advocate giving a voice to things. And so what I've always done at the piano and through my music is I give a voice to what I'm feeling and to the messages coming into me. But there's so many people that need a voice. Um, so I go all the way, and I think if, if number two is the takeaway, Christ consciousness number one. Number two, don't give up if you're not sure exactly what you're supposed to be doing yet, right? Just keep on doing the next thing. It will lead you to the next thing. I literally thought it was gonna be music therapy. I was gonna open up this big business and I had it all planned out in my mind. And I got through a really difficult time in that and I went, nope, I have to be a lawyer. That's it. Both of my parents were lawyers. My father's still practicing and he's been trying for years. One of these days, you might wanna be a lawyer. And I'm like, no, I'm a musician. Quit telling me I'm gonna be a lawyer. So when I came back to him after all this education and music therapy, music therapy, I was like, Dad, I think I need to go to law school. I, you know, his first reaction was, oh my God, how much is that gonna cost me, you know? <laughs> For God's sake, child, get your act together. No, he doesn't really feel that way. Number one, he's not gonna have to pay for it this time, so that helps a lot, but I'm very, I finally, like, you know, I'm so excited about this next adventure. I'm gonna be starting school in August, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna learn all about the legal system so that I can do my next thing, which is to be a voice somehow. I'm very passionate about women's issues. I'm passionate about healthcare. Those are my two things, but I'm open to whatever is gonna happen after that. Um, so, I have no idea how much time I've been talking. Um, I want to do, if, if you'll let me, I want to tell you a little bit about my, my coaching practice. Um, in 2020, I, had, I started having a lot of people we, in the first months of the pandemic reaching out to me. Are you teaching? Are you doing anything online? Can you help my children? They're alone in the house with nothing to do, and they're not doing any music. And I was like, well, yeah, of course I can. So... Not, not barely having done anything online, I, start, I got a Zoom account, I started having these students all over the country, from my friends who live all over the country, and we started having music groups. So we, we sang ourselves through the first months of that pandemic. And then um, later on, I started seeing in-person clients and ended up with, before I knew it, I had 20 students. And what we did, what I was, was an advocate for their music because I really cared about making sure that kids and people did not lose music. Because here's the other thing about being a musician. This is one reason why I didn't want to, I mean, first of all, who could have performed during the pandemic? But everything's different if you've always been a performer. Like, everything is different. When I go to live places now, I'm like, well, first of all, how many vaccines have you had? <laughs> you know, are you, you know, and there's just so much, there's so many different things to think about now as a performer that it has really lost. That's the reality that we're in. It has lost a lot of what it had before for me and I've had a lot of grief over that. I, I can no longer just go into any place and not think about if everybody's feeling okay. I just, I can't be a responsible person and not wonder because the COVID is still happening, people are still getting sick and very sick, and I don't even think we know how far the ramifications are gonna be of this for a very long time. So anyway, I had 20 students at one point in time, and we were just coming in and holding the line for music and just keeping it going for people. Um, and that has kind of dwindled. But if you would all stand up for me, I just wanna show you a little bit about the power of your own voice, and we can talk about this more later. Maybe I'll come and do this again, but. Put your feet. <sighs> Take a nice deep breath in through your nose. And blow it into the ground through your feet. <sighs> Let's do one more of those. <sighs> okay, now we're gonna do a full 
swoop of your whole entire vocal range. We're gonna go to your lowest note, so find a low note. Ah, very good. We're gonna do this. Ah, let's do one, two, ready, here we go. Ah, very good, let's do one more. Deep breath in and out and a swoop. Oh. Can you feel that through your whole body? Does it make you tingle a little bit? That's the beginning of how I start a voice session. You can all sit down. That's what I start with. Um, so if any of you feel inspired or know anybody that, that would like to come work with me, I'm still doing that. I'm going to finish this talk up and we'll go into the meditation, but... So Christ consciousness is something that we tap into by choice. Yes, there's one power in the universe, God the good, omnipotent. But there are other lookalikes, right? People trying to vie for our attention. There's all kinds of choices we can make about what kind of consciousness we want to bring to any moment. And a lot of times, if you feel me, we have to make this choice like, multiple millions of times every single day. <laughs> I'm going to offer you peace and understanding and compassion, even though you are in a different realm, <laughs> right? This is where we are in this world. And I just think we're going to have even more challenges as we go. So number one, start your day with a deep breath into your own Christ consciousness that lives in our cells. It's already there. Let's do that again. Deep breath. Number two, don't ever give up before you get to the thing, whatever your thing is. And maybe your thing is this one thing for now. And then, well, it's a new thing. Okay, just let it be a new thing. Don't worry about what anybody says to you. Don't worry about anybody else's fears. And the third thing, which we'll go into with the last song, is like, let it go, right? Take a deep breath with me. This is one thing that, so my next healing process is learning how to let go of the past. Because the healing journey is what it was, and it was really hard. But it doesn't, I don't have to live there anymore. Do you know what I mean? Some people are nodding. Just because you had a struggle, you don't, doesn't mean you have to live in it forever in order for it to be real. That's something that I've struggled with. Yes, it's real. Nobody can ever take away the realness of your struggle, but you can also live and be happy. That's the whole point, is to get to the happy. So I'm gonna let uh, Phyllis take you to, into your meditation. Thank you for obliging me this morning with speaking. <laughs> I appreciate you. So in that space of where God is there, 
both feet on the floor. Let's close our eyes together, take a deep breath as we did before. And just resting in this place of the Holy Spirit that's in this room and in our bodies and our minds and hearts and in the hearts and minds and bodies of all the people that we love, both here and, and afar. We just appreciate the rhythm of our bodies and the fact that it's moving for us again today. And all the wonderful opportunities we have still left to heal and to grow and to be expressions of the Christ mind for the people that we come in contact with. Forgiving, compassionate, loving. Maybe we make mistakes. Of course we always will, but we come back to this place within ourselves. So with another deep breath, We rest in the silence. Thank you, Natalie. Thank you for your message. Thank you for your music. Thank you for reminding us of our source and where we go. Thank you. So now we are going to state our abundance affirmation together as we um, bless ourselves for the coming week. 
I am abundant being living in an abundant universe. I am not dependent on people or situations for anything. God is the source of my supply. I always have something to give, and I consistently give it. I expect the best, I give my best, and I now attract the best in every situation. Will the greeters please come forward to collect our blessings, requests, and offerings? As we sing, oh yeah, okay, that's right. <laughs> Let it go. Uh, the words to the chorus, I think, if I don't say it. I did make, there they are, this is the chorus. Two roads converge in the wood And I know to do the things I should I let down my defenses And I let the light shine through Because I am the light and you are too Your light shine out for all the world. And let it go, hallelujah. Let it flow right through you. You are one with God, and all is well. Jesus was a man misunderstood, and everybody thought that. Thought they knew his secrets, but they never heard his truth. He said, I am the light and you are too. And let it go, hallelujah, let it flow right through you. Let your light shine out.
take that on the road. That sounded good. <laughs> Thank you, Natalie. Despite appearances, you are one with God and all is well. So we want to thank you, Natalie. Um, so I have some announcements, the first of which is we have a food drive going on for the month of June. Phyllis Wycliffe is the person behind that. So please uh, bring your non-perishable food items, cleaning supplies, or hygiene products. She will pick them up out of the bin every night and bring them in the building and put the bin back out. So um, please. Uh, please give. Next we have the Board of Trustees welcomes you always to their meetings. And we are beginning to meet, uh, the board is beginning to meet twice a month um, during this time. And um, the next meetings are June 5th and 19th at 5.30. Bring your questions, concerns, ideas, bring your energy, we welcome you. Next. Ah, Luke Salmon is heading up the Chapel Update Committee. Please contact him. Please be a part of this. Let's get some energy going around continuing the work of uh, beautifying our chapel. Our guest speaker for the next two weeks will be the one, the infamous, Reverend David LeBeau. Um, he was our foundational minister. He was our first minister. He served for 20 years. Uh, between 1989 and 2012. And he is back visiting family in the area, so uh, we look forward to hearing his messages. So for those of you who aren't familiar, please come. For those of you who are familiar, please come. So we look forward to seeing him again. He's also, next slide, he's also going to be doing in, in so he's speaking on Father's Day. Um, and child care will be available on that day, so we'll give equal measure to the dads as we did for the mom. Um, next slide. And David will be doing chair yoga. I'm sorry, Seb, I thought there was a slide for chair yoga while he's here on June 15th from 12 to uh, 1. I think it's June 15th. And so in person, and it's in the bulletin also, as Luke helped me with that. So the financial update in the newsletter um, gave you some information about where we are with our finances. And um, I would like for all of you to kind of put your Christ mind and consciousness towards that. We are running behind the budget. And I, in that, I would like to offer you my abundance story, if I could just briefly. Um, the, uh, coming away from my family of origin, I knew I wasn't quite right. And so I did some things, such as uh, got therapy, and I went to the 12-step program, and I also joined Unity. And in Unity, what I learned was, it's all good. It's all there for you. You're just not seeing it. And you, you have to get your mind right in order to align yourself with the flow and what is. And I worked on myself, I worked on myself. I took uh, Reverend David LeBeau's uh, spiritual economics class, and I also read absolutely everything written by Catherine Ponder. I even went to a conference uh, in Palm Springs, California, where her home church, she's an international unity minister, but her home church was in Palm Springs and gave her a tithe, hoping to see her. Um, there is a, an, a really great article in this um, month's Unity magazine that's written by um, uh, Reverend Maggie Whitehouse, The Sacred Truth About Tithing, and it's a really great article. And I would be happy to share it with anybody, but it was, she reminded me of my experience, and so I wanted to offer to you this, that what I learned is that always, as Natalie said, Christ first. You gotta get yourself right in your mind and say, even though I can't see it, I can't feel it, like the 12-step program, fake it till you make it, and act as if, right? You act as the abundant being which you are, connected to all that is always. It's just when we don't feel it, we're in our ego self. So we get ourselves right is the first step, and we give to that which inspires us to do that. We give to God first. And the second is we take care of ourselves. We do the self-care necessary because we were given this life and we were given this vessel to get out there in the world and take action. And so we have to take care of this as well. And then the third step that I was reminded by this article 
is the third step is then you give to others. You do your charity work and you pay your bills. And so what that means is it's not, as especially women learn in our culture, is put other people first. It's not put, love your neighbor first. It's love your neighbor as yourself because love is what is. So I want to encourage all of you to think about where is my mind in giving? Where, what am I setting my intention for and with? So with that, I will be quiet. So thank you for listening. So in closing, what we know for sure is together, the light of God surrounds us, the love of God enfolds us, the power of God protects us, and the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. Now can we ask you to form a circle, hold hands, and sing our peace song.